Welcome back to the Stan Simpson Show. Joined now by our entertainment attorney, James Walker, an emerging actor. And a guy in the Hollywood scene, Michael Jai's White. Many of you know him, a bridge coordinator, starring in two upcoming films. You've seen him in Tyson. You've seen him in, in uh, Spawn. He's been in the uh, Tyler Perry shows. Uh, not only, you're more than an emerging star, you're a guy who's <laughs> arrived on, on the Hollywood, so to speak. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Bridgeport guy, Stanford guy. You guys know each other back in the day? I'm a Bridgeport guy. Basic High School, man. Class yeah. 86. I came yeah, in the studio. used to run against these guys. <laughs> yeah. Black belt in karate, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of guys came in the studio. You have a Michael Jai White on. What's he doing here? What are you doing back in Connecticut? Well, I'm here um, for two reasons. I'm, um, uh, we, we're having a, uh, a Hartford uh, debut of Black Dynamite, right? my film Black mm -hmm. Dynamite. I'm also here to support Joe Young and Joe Young Studios. Uh, in uh, the project of Diamond Ruff, the mm -hmm. Diamond R mm -hmm. Ruff project that we intend on shooting this summer here in Hartford. We had Joe Young on our show a few weeks back. He's doing some good things in Hartford. Now let's talk about this movie. It's going to drop or it's being shown in Bloomfield last week. Let's take a quick look at the trailer and talk more about your career and where you're going next. Here's a quick clip from Black Dynamite. There's a brand new movie coming to town. So get on up and check the scene of the smoothest, baddest mother to ever hit the big screen. Main man, Black Dynamite. He's super cool and he no kung fu. Now, it's sort of a black exploitation film, they call it, right? You do a bunch of different genres. Talk about this kind of film, because some folks find it offensive, these sort of what they call black exploitation films, right? Well, some, some of the people, may, people who are, are uneducated about it might find it offensive. The fact is, uh, it was the most uplifting time in, in the history of, of, for, you know, black people in the history of film. It was the first time where people were uh, dared to be... Uh, Heroes and uh, not playing these uh, roles that were just, you know, you know, like maids and sh you know, shuffling type of characters. Mm -hmm. Step and type yeah, of stuff. All, all that type of stuff. It's actually a, a time period that saved Hollywood. The term black exploitation came along later on once Hollywood realized it was a cash cow, right. and then they started churning out really bad movies, uh, you know, with with low budgets and very little time to do those. Right. And then those movies, the NAACP termed black exploitation type of movies for the exploitation part of it. But all the while, there were movies that were done that were, you know, that were great movies. Mm -hmm. That just unfortunately during that time, that term black exploitation kind of overwhelmed it. And even movies like, like, um, like Shaft, mm -hmm. which. Uh, you know, existed before the word black exploitation existed. Still, people think Shaft was a black exploitation movie right. when right. it's not. But you started with uh, mm -hmm. John Claude Van Damme, mm -hmm. Steven Seagal, Tyler Perry. What's it like now for a black actor male? Is the struggle still there, or you got to the point now where you have name recognition and you can pick your parts, or is it always a struggle? Well, it's always a struggle. What what I'm doing is I'm doing very much a uh, thing like Tyler Perry. I'm I'm producing in. Uh, you know, creating my own movies, uh, and I'm doing so in a worldwide fashion. Actually, Black Dynamite is doing so tremendous in other countries uh, because there sometimes it doesn't exist that that stereotype that may be that may be in this country. And when you have studios, sometimes they believe that oh, it's a black movie, it's not going to do well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not true. We're really proving the opposite. I see James Walker shaking his head. Here's a guy now going independent, maybe taking the Tyler Perry route, it. right? Mm -hmm. Talk about that, James. No, More actors that say, hey, I'll do it my own. It's ironic to hear him talk about this because I'm very familiar with that black exploitation period. When you think of Gordon Parks, you think of Melvin Van Peebles. These are guys who were doing quality work in the 60s and 70s, but they didn't get a lot of attention. And to see what he's doing is great because he's bringing awareness to that, particularly in this week of so-called Oscar nominations. And we typically have been excluded from a lot of that fanfare. So it's good to see brothers like him, Tyler Perry, of course Spike, of course the other crew that we know. It's good to see them actually bring into the forefront quality movies as well as clarifying what happened 20, 30 years ago. And that term got put on a bunch of movies that were actually really good movies. But they kind of got, you know, cashed into that whole little box. Let's talk about the kid from Bridgeport with a dream here, Black Belt and Karate. Walk us through that dream as a kid in Bridgeport. Say, I want to be an, an actor and how that evolved from being a kid to getting a black belt to using your black belt to uh, elevate to, to the movies. How did that all happen for you? Well, um, the, the martial arts was actually part of, uh, you know, that's a separate entity. I, I, 
I was kind of rudderless, didn't know really where I wanted to go. I, I just knew, get yourself in college some kind of way. Mm -hmm. And try to figure out, figure it out there. Get, you know, get myself more options. And all along, I would, you know, I do these acting classes out of fun, but didn't really take it serious. Till later, when I, I, I said to myself, I really got to, you know, figure out if, if I could do this for a living and just get it out of my system. So it's still in my system. You know, thank God. Uh, for some some uh, good fortune, mm -hmm. uh, and you know I've uh, taken on the acting thing, and I look at it as a business because it is show business. Mm -hmm. I got about uh, your women that left. My mm -hmm. favorite uh, Michael Jai White uh, flick, Tyson HBO. Great job with that. You were the lead role in Tyson. Let me segue to the Oscars. Talking about flicks coming up. James Walker, when a pop up walks picks, the Oscar nominees are out. You did a good job with the uh, Beyonce, B Beyonce the right last week. Uh, last week now another back. chance to uh, get on there. What are some of the best actor, best uh, best picture, best actor, best actress? Real quick, what do you think is going to win out there? Well, I think Monique is going to win. I think okay. she's going to get it for Precious in the supporting actress category. I think James Cameron, the Avatar machine, is going to steamroll everybody. He's up for nine nominations, and I just don't see anyone beating Avatar. It's a 3D movie that doesn't make you feel like a 3D movie. And I think uh, Lee Daniels is up for best director, I believe, which is a first. You remember years ago, Spike Lee was always snubbed. Then you remember John Singleton. He got nominated for, I think, Boys in the Hood. And now we got Lee Daniels, who, if he wins, would be, I think, the first African-American to win in that category. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Best actor. Best actor, Jeff Bridges, Crazy Heart. Mm -hmm. And best Michael actress, Jai White, any thoughts? Sitting uh, pensively, and he, is, is he, he on I'm track? to him, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I have a personal favorite, which is George Clooney. Uh -huh. You do? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, up, uh, in you know, up in the air. But, I mean, you know, you expect that kind of work from George Clooney. Right. But, uh, but, but I would go, I would bet on Crazy Heart. About Best Picture, real quick. Best Picture? I'm going to say, for Best Picture, Up in the Air. Avatar. Okay. How about Blind Side, guys? I keep hearing great things about Blind Side. Sandra Sleeper? Bullock is going to win, but she's going up against Meryl Streep, which okay, is, so. you know... A favorite always, but Sandra Bullock will probably win for the Blind For side. Best Actress. For Best Actress. And Sleeper there? Sleeper there. Helen Mirren, the Great Dame, is in that category. All right, you guys know the deal. I'm getting that hard rap side. You guys know the deal with it. I got to run. Got to have you back. When you're in town again, come in. James, you're always here. So uh, thanks to all our guests, to uh, James Walker, Michael Jai White. When we come back, we'll talk to local cartoonist Cesar Feliciano. He has launched a new cartoon featuring the newest Supreme Court judge, Sonia Sotomayor. Don't go away.